always thought we'd stay a team. We stopped being a team when you decided to partner up with psychopaths. Fuse originally lit expectations back in 2011 when it debuted as the tongue-in-cheek spy romp Overstrike. But the years of development since have brought more to the game than just a different name. Toning down the camp and turning up the grit, it resurfaces in 2013 with a noticeable shift in identity. But does the spark still remain for this Insomniac Games produced joint? We call it Fuse. Living matter recovered from an L6 classified event in the early 20th century. Fuse derives its name from a fictional extraterrestrial element that's been weaponized by a secret government lab. And as luck would have it, a rogue paramilitary corporation called Raven has just made away with the latest stock. As part of the elite contact team known as Overstrike 9, you've been called in to clean up the mess with a little help from some of the toys left behind. If the debut trailer caught your attention with its cheeky cartoon camp, consider the mood of the game's present iteration more along the lines of a standard operation. Save for a few random quips that seem disconnected from the game's more serious tone, the four battle-hardened members of this mercenary unit glower from mission to mission with precious little of the life or humor that helped define them early on. I love it when he states the obvious. It's a far cry from the comical caper everyone thought it would be, but it hasn't completely abandoned all the elements of its original pitch. Much as can be expected from the creators of Ratchet & Clank, Fuse's wild weaponry takes center stage here, harnessing the far-flung possibilities of alien tech within the container of a cover-based third-person shooter. Each agent comes equipped with their own particular Xenotech weapon that serves some kind of unconventional function on the battlefield. Your gruff unit leader Dalton, for instance, can deploy a defensive energy shield that can absorb and repel incoming bullets back at their targets, while Jacob's arc shot can skewer foes from a distance with high-velocity incendiary bolts. Racking up the headcounts and XP in battle opens up the opportunity to plunk points in an MMO-style talent tree, granting additional passive and active bonuses to enhance your killing power in battle. All right, let's hustle. Knowing where and when to point your muzzle is an easy enough task, but what Fuse tries to do differently is play up the importance of making your unit's capabilities count in combat. From heavily shielded enemies charging at you in phalanx formation, to volatile containers emitting an unlimited font of Fuse ammunition, the game makes a constant push towards approaching each scenario thoughtfully with the right tool in mind. As such, you'll often find Dalton serving out the front lines with his aforementioned shield, Naya's ability to immobilize foes with pocket wormholes is useful in a pinch, as is Izzy's tossable med beacon, which resuscitates any downed team members from far away. Often, the game manages to frame its scenarios in a way that makes the unique capabilities of each Xenotech weapon shine, moreover making teamwork feel like a necessary part of the equation. You can't kill a senator. Why not? I didn't vote for him. That's not the point! The team element that Fuse strives for is a meaningful and successful part of the game's identity, so you can imagine how troublesome it can get when left to the whims of the game's AI. Unable to issue squad commands, you're only instead capable of leaping between the members of Overstrike 9 at certain times. Being downed, unfortunately, doesn't count as one of them, forcing you to twiddle your thumbs until some help comes along. Oftentimes, you'll also find yourself manually switching control to a far-off member to pry them from their inert positions behind cover, or bear witness to random oddities between friend and foe taking place. As to be expected, playing with another pal through split-screen or online is strongly preferred. Now drop the hardware and step away from the weapon. No chance. After some time, you begin to realize that the obliviousness that Fuse's AI is often prone to surfaces in many other facets of the game as well. For how the game plays up the seamless nature of controlling your squad, not being able to level up another character's talent tree without first unpausing the menu and switching control to them comes off as needlessly clunky. The campaign teases the potential of unique vertical set pieces with light traversal segments and a spry third-person control scheme, and yet all engagements take place on boring flat arenas with chest-high walls. Most of all, it seems as if all the changes that Fuse went through in order to be different have only served to make it blander by regard. It sounds like such an insignificant thing, but the game's lack of personality just might be the most distressing quality about it. For how much Overstrike hammed up its story as a main draw for the cameras, the sparse dialogue, bland plot, and undercooked narrative that Fuse turned up to be read as a hastily executed response to a game stuck in an identity crisis. Oculus, they're not building better light bulbs down here. Fuse isn't frustrating or failing at anything technically specific, it falters for being forgettable. Still, it's hard to discredit the fundamental shooting experience that Fuse happens to get right. Character-deprived and routine as its six-chapter campaign is, the varied mix of enemy types and scenarios do well at satisfying an itchy trigger finger, if nothing else. The game also transplants many of its best ideas into its primary multiplayer feature, Echelon Mode, which combines the ubiquitous wave-clearing hook of Horde Mode with randomly occurring objectives within repurposed campaign environments. It provides a hearty challenge with an unpredictable factor that can be pretty satisfying with the right crew. 
But as with all team-focused experiences, it's best experienced with a friend or two. I think you're lying. Let's see if I'm right. Fuse's fastidious rebranding quite literally urges you to look away from the cartoon caricatures of its past and towards the shiny muzzle flare of its super-powered weaponry, teeing up an apt analogy for the ultimate product of Overstrike's dogged journey to the finish line. Some might see it as an enjoyable co-op shooter with a sci-fi bent, some as an exercise of wasted potential. We imagine it stands as a science experiment, for if yet another unremarkable $60 shooting gallery can sell, Insomniac's solid track record points to a positive outcome, but this might be a case where the catalyst just isn't strong enough. They are wrong about Fuse. It isn't energy or power. It is truth.